Chapter 2. The Best Way to Buy an International Airplane Ticket When it comes to buying an international airplane ticket, there are a few different ways to go about it. You can either buy a ticket from a travel agent, from an online airline website, or from a ticket broker. Each of these options has its own set of pros and cons, so it's important to weigh your options before making a decision. What are your options when buying an international airplane ticket? When buying an international airplane ticket, there are a few things to consider. The most important thing is to decide what class of ticket you want. There are three classes, economy, business, and first class. Another thing to consider is the type of airplane. There are two types, narrow body and wide body. Narrow body airplanes have one aisle, while wide body airplanes have two aisles. Narrow body airplanes are smaller and usually cheaper than wide body airplanes. They also tend to fly shorter distances. Wide body airplanes are larger and can fly longer distances. Another thing to consider is the airline you want to fly with. Some airlines are better than others. Some airlines have better customer service, while others have better safety records. Finally, you need to decide how much you want to spend. Tickets can range from a few hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. What is the best way to buy an international airplane ticket? There are a few things to keep in mind when buying an international airplane ticket. The first is that you'll want to make sure you're buying your ticket from a reputable source. Otherwise, you may not be guaranteed a seat on the plane. Secondly, you'll need to decide whether you want to buy a one-way ticket or a round-trip ticket. One-way tickets can be more expensive, but they offer more flexibility if you're not sure when you'll be returning. In the end, the best way to buy an international airplane ticket is to carefully consider your needs and budget and then make the best decision for you. What are the benefits of buying an international airplane ticket? There are many benefits to buying an international airplane ticket. When you purchase an international ticket, you are often given priority boarding and a better seat. You may also be able to get a discount on your hotel room. Additionally, you may be able to get a refund if your flight is canceled or delayed. What are the risks of buying an international airplane ticket? There are a few risks associated with buying an international airplane ticket. Firstly, you may not be able to get a refund or change your ticket if something comes up. Secondly, you may not be able to find a flight that works with your schedule. Finally, you may not be able to find a seat on the flight you want. How can you save money when buying an international airplane ticket? When buying an international airplane ticket, there are many ways to save money. One way is to book your ticket well in advance. If you wait until the last minute, the price will be much higher. Another way is to fly during the off-season. Airlines typically offer lower prices for tickets during the off-season. You can also save money by choosing a less popular destination. If you are willing to fly to a destination that is not as popular, you can save a lot of money on your ticket. Finally, you can also save money by choosing a seating class that is less expensive. If you are willing to fly in coach instead of first class, you can save a lot of money. In the end, the best way to buy an international airplane ticket is to weigh your options and decide which option is best for you. If you're looking for a cheap ticket, then an online airline website might be the best option. If you're looking for convenience, then a travel agent might be the best option. And if you're looking for the best deal, then a ticket broker might be the best option. International Lodging Choices The Pros and Cons of Hotels, Hostels, and Airbnb Whether traveling for business or pleasure, making arrangements for temporary lodging can be a daunting task. There are many options available, each with its own set of pros and cons. Hotels, hostels, and Airbnb are all popular choices. But what is the best option for you? Here's a look at the pros and cons of each. What are the main types of international lodging choices? When traveling abroad, there are a few different types of lodging choices you can make. The three most common are hotels, hostels, and apartments. Let's look at each in more detail. Hotels are the most common type of lodging and can be found in most major cities. They typically offer a private room with a bed, television, and bathroom. Rates vary depending on the location and star rating of the hotel. Hostels are another popular option, especially among younger travelers. They are less expensive than hotels and typically offer shared rooms and bathrooms. 
Hostels often have a communal area where travelers can socialize and meet new people. Apartments are a good option for those who want more privacy or want to cook their own meals. Apartments can be rented for short-term or long-term stays and can be found in most major cities. What are the pros and cons of hotels? There are pros and cons to both hotels and Airbnb. Hotels have the advantage of more consistency in terms of service and amenities, while Airbnb offers more unique experiences and often more affordable prices. Hotels can be more expensive, but they typically offer a more reliable experience. For example, a hotel might have a pool, a gym, and free breakfast. An Airbnb might not have all of those things, but could be in a more interesting location or have a more interesting host. Ultimately, it depends on what you are looking for in a travel experience. What are the pros and cons of hostels? Hostels are a great way to meet other travelers, save money, and experience a new city or country. They can be a little noisy, and the shared bathrooms can be a bit of a challenge, but overall, hostels offer a great value for the money. What are the pros and cons of Airbnb? There are pros and cons to using Airbnb for lodging. The pros are that you can often find cheaper lodging through Airbnb than you can through a hotel, and you can often find more unique lodging through Airbnb than you can through a hotel. The cons are that you may not have the same level of customer service that you would receive from a hotel, and you may not have the same level of security that you would receive from a hotel. No matter what your travel needs may be, it is important to do your research and choose the option that best suits you. Hotels, hostels, and Airbnb all have their own unique benefits and drawbacks, so be sure to consider them all before making a decision. Ultimately, the choice is yours, and you should choose what makes you feel most comfortable. International travel. Should you rent a car? There are a few things to keep in mind when renting a car for international travel. The first is to make sure that you are aware of the driving laws in the country you are visiting. In some countries, you may be required to drive on the other side of the road. The second is to be aware of the restrictions on driving in certain areas. In some countries, you may not be able to drive in certain areas, such as downtown areas or near airports. The third is to make sure that you are aware of the insurance requirements in the country you are visiting. In some countries, you may be required to have additional insurance in order to drive. There are a number of benefits to renting a car for international travel. Perhaps the most obvious advantage is that you have your own transportation and can go wherever you want, when you want. This independence is especially useful if you're traveling to a country where you don't speak the language. With your own car, you can explore off the beaten path and find hidden gems that you would never have discovered otherwise. Another big advantage of renting a car is that it can save you a lot of money. For example, if you're traveling in a group, renting a car can be much cheaper than taking taxis or public transportation. And if you're traveling to a rural area or a place where public transportation is limited, renting a car can be your only option. There are a few things to keep in mind when renting a car for international travel. First, make sure that you're familiar with the driving laws in the country you're visiting. In some countries, you may need an international driving permit, IDP, in order to drive. Second, be aware of the different insurance requirements in different countries. In some cases, you may be required to purchase additional insurance coverage in order to drive. Finally, be sure to research the different rental car companies in the area and compare prices. By doing your homework in advance, you can save yourself a lot of money and hassle. There are a few drawbacks to renting a car for international travel. The first is that it can be expensive. Car rental rates tend to be higher for international trips than for domestic ones. The second is that you may have to pay extra for things like insurance and fuel. And the third is that you may not be able to find a car rental agency in the country you're visiting. So if you're planning an international trip, it's important to consider these factors before you decide whether or not to rent a car. When traveling to a foreign country, renting a car is often the best way to get around. However, there are a few things to keep in mind when renting a car for international travel. First, be sure to familiarize yourself with the driving laws in the country you are visiting. 
In some countries it is illegal to drive on the left side of the road, while in others you may be required to use a specific type of fuel. Second, be sure to understand the insurance requirements in the country you are visiting. Many countries require drivers to have liability insurance, and in some cases, collision insurance is also required. Finally, be sure to research the different rental car companies in the country you are visiting. Some companies may have more restrictions than others, and some may be more expensive. In the end, it is up to you whether or not to rent a car when traveling abroad. Just keep in mind the pros and cons of doing so, and make the decision that best suits your needs. How to use ride-sharing services for international travel. Ride-sharing services are becoming more and more popular as a way to get around town. But what are they, and how do they work? Ride-sharing services are transportation networks that use digital platforms to match passengers with drivers who provide rides in their personal vehicles. These services are typically used for shorter trips, such as getting from one part of town to another rather than long-distance travel. Ride-sharing services work by connecting passengers with drivers in the local area. Passengers enter their pickup and drop-off locations into the app, and the app will show them a list of drivers who are available and close to those locations. Passengers can then compare the prices and ratings of different drivers and choose the one that best suits their needs. Once the passenger has chosen a driver, they will be given the driver's contact information. The passenger can then contact the driver to arrange a time and place for pickup. The driver will usually wait for the passenger to arrive at the pickup location, but sometimes the driver may ask the passenger to meet them at a specific spot. When the ride is over, the passenger will notify the driver, and the driver will drop the passenger off at their desired destination. Payment is typically handled through the app, and passengers can typically pay with a credit card, debit card, or PayPal account. There are many benefits of using ride-sharing services for international travel. Ride-sharing services are convenient, affordable, and safe. They can help you save time and money, and they can make your travel experience easier and more enjoyable. When it comes to ride-sharing, there are a lot of different services to choose from. How do you know which one is the best for your needs? Here are a few tips to help you decide. Consider how often you will need a ride. If you need a ride only occasionally, a traditional taxi service may be best for you. If you need a ride regularly, a ride-sharing service may be a better option. Think about where you will need to go. Ride-sharing services are available in most major cities, but not all services are available in every city. Consider your budget. Ride-sharing services can be cheaper than traditional taxis, but they may not be the cheapest option available. Think about your comfort level. Some ride-sharing services allow you to choose the driver, while others do not. You may also want to consider the type of car that will be picking you up. Check out the reviews. Before you choose a ride-sharing service, be sure to check out the reviews online. This will help you to see what others have thought about the service and whether it is a good fit for you. What are the biggest challenges associated with using ride-sharing services for international travel? One of the biggest challenges associated with using ride-sharing services for international travel is understanding the various rules and regulations that are in place in each country. For example, in some countries, it is illegal to pick up passengers who are not registered with the service, while in others, you may be fined for not having a taxi license. It is also important to be aware of the different languages that are spoken in each country, as this can affect your ability to communicate with the driver. How to use trains in international travel. If you're looking to travel to a new destination and want to save on airfare, using trains might be the best option for you. Trains can take you to many different places, both domestically and internationally, and can be a more affordable option than flying. In this section, we'll give you a few tips on how to use trains in international travel. What are the benefits of using trains in international travel? Trains are a great way to travel long distances, and they offer a variety of benefits over other forms of transportation. For example, 
Trains are more comfortable and spacious than buses, and they often allow passengers to see more of the countryside than they would if they were flying. In addition, trains are usually much cheaper than flying, and they are much more environmentally friendly than cars or planes. How do you find train routes and schedules? To find train routes and schedules, there are a few different websites that you can use. The first is Amtrak's website, which allows you to search for routes by city pairs. The second is the Deutsche Bahn website, which allows you to search for routes by city or by train number. The third is the Rail Europe website, which allows you to search for routes by country. What do you need to know before boarding a train? There are a few things you need to know before boarding a train. First, always check the schedule and plan your trip in advance. Second, Make sure you have a ticket and that it is valid for the date and time of your journey. Third, arrive at the train station early enough to buy a ticket and board the train. And finally, be aware of the luggage restrictions and make sure you pack accordingly. What are some tips for making the most of your train journey? There's no need to spend your train journey feeling cramped and uncomfortable. Here are some tips for making the most of your journey. Make use of the space available. If you're traveling with a backpack, try to put it on the floor or on the luggage rack above your head. Spread out. If you're traveling with a friend, move to different parts of the carriage to give yourselves some space. Bring a book or a magazine to read. Take a nap. If you're feeling tired, you can always take a nap. Relax. The journey is a chance to relax and catch up on some sleep. What are the dangers of using trains in international travel? There are a few dangers to be aware of when using trains for international travel. First, it's important to be familiar with the different types of trains and their purposes, as some are faster and more comfortable than others. Second, always be aware of your surroundings and who is around you and keep your belongings close to you. Third, make sure you know the schedule and plan your trip accordingly, as trains can be delayed or canceled without warning. Finally, be sure to have all of your documents and visas ready as you may be asked to show them at any time. How to use public transportation during international travel. If you're planning on traveling internationally, it's important to familiarize yourself with the public transportation options available in the cities you'll be visiting. In most cases, public transportation is the most efficient and affordable way to get around. Learn about the public transportation options in the city you're visiting. Before you visit a new city, it's important to learn about the public transportation options available. In most cases, you can find information about the local transportation system on the city's website or by contacting the local tourist board. Public transportation in most cities includes buses, trains, and metros. The best way to find out which option is best for you is to do a little research online or talk to locals. In most cases, Public transportation is the cheapest way to get around a city. However, it's important to note that public transportation can be crowded and often takes longer than driving or taking a taxi. So, if you're in a hurry, it might be better to take a taxi. Regardless of which mode of transportation you choose, always be aware of your surroundings and be cautious when traveling in a new city. Familiarize yourself with the routes and schedules. There are a few ways to familiarize yourself with the routes and schedules. The first way is to visit the website and explore it yourself. The website has a map of all the routes and a schedule of when the buses arrive and depart. The second way is to go to the transit center and look at the displays that show the routes and schedules. And the third way is to ask one of the workers at the transit center for help. Purchase a transit pass, if available. If you're planning on spending any significant time in the city, it's worth it to purchase a transit pass. Not only will you save money, but you'll also avoid having to stand in line to purchase a ticket each time you ride. Check to see if your destination city has a transit pass available, and if it does, purchase one as soon as possible. 